Hmm. Oh, hey, Valerie. What you doing? Oh. Are you making a video without me? Oh. Oh, because you found a faster way to do the steady state error? Oh, I should have thought about that, huh? Oh. She says that we need to use the final value theorem and we can figure out the steady state error faster. So let's try that. Okay, well let's recall first of all what the final value theorem is. Okay, if you recall it would be we want to find the value of E as time goes to infinity, which is equivalent to the limit as t goes to infinity of our function e of t. So in here e is going to represent our error, because that's what we want to find. And this is equivalent to, if we change it into the Laplace domain, the limit as s goes to zero of s times our Laplace version of our Laplace transform of the error function. So we can use this to find the same steady state value. Next, what we have to do is, I'll box this because this is important. The next thing we have to do then is figure out the expression for this E of S in terms of things that we know. So if we look at our feedback, basic feedback diagram here, we know our reference, we know what reference we're going to be putting into it, and we want to see the steady state error based off of that. We may also, if we know these values already, we've already calculated, we have the transfer function for these two things, we can find an expression for E of S. So let's do that first. So we know that E of S is equal to, it's defined by Y ref of S minus y, S, y of S. And we know that Y of S, based on this feedback loop, I'll write it here, y of s is equal to this error originally times these two plant function, transfer functions. gc of s and gp of s. Right? So then we can plug this back into here and we can get e equals y ref of s minus this whole expression, so e of s, g c of s, g p of s, equal to e. And again, we want to find e by itself, right? So we move this over and divide some stuff out. And we should get e of s is equal to this in the numerator, y ref of s. And we move this over and then divide it, so it'll be 1 plus the g, two g values, so 1 plus g c. Oops, that's a P. G C of S G P of S. So here's one expression. If we know our G C and G P values, we can plug it into here, and then all we have to do is multiply that expression by S and take the limit as S goes to zero, and we will find our value. So I'll write that right here. Sometimes I forget parentheses. So our uh, value of e at, as time goes to infinity, so the steady state, is equal to the limit oops, limit as s goes to 0 of s times this thing. So s y ref 1 plus g c of s g p of s. So this would be one of our steady state values. You can also write e in a different way. Say you already know the closed loop transfer function and you don't want to go through and calculate these individual ones. You can also write e as if you find another value for y here. So y can also be expressed as the, this input, y ref times the total closed loop transfer function, right? That's t. So if we then replace this y there, we would get e of s equals y ref of s. 
So plug that in there, we get this value minus y ref of s times t of s. And here we can see that we get y ref of s multiplied by 1 minus t of s. So these would be equivalent expressions. They're just depending if you already know t or if you know g, c, and g, p. Hi, and then we would do the same thing here. If we take the e to the infinite infinity, it would equal to the limit as s goes to 0 of this expression times s. So it would be s y ref of s 1 minus t of s. Okay, so this is, these are the basic expressions. If you want to find the steady state error in a faster way and you already know these transfer functions, rather than taking the reverse Laplace, which can get messy if you have complicated equations, you can use either of these equations to find the steady state value. Of course, remember you have to make sure that your system does converge to an actual steady state value. So you have to look at the poles of the system and understand if it's going to converge or not. So. Thank you, Valerie, for giving us that tip. And you can use this from now on, and it's a little bit faster to find the steady state error.